Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. You know, for years and years and years, and ever since I've had a child who's now 13 and a half, I've been um, faced with this choice. Um, do I give him a flu shot? Do I give myself a flu shot? Um, and, you know, and, 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 you know, of course they say, if you catch it and you give it to him, then, you know, you're, you're doing a disservice, certainly, so you should be inoculated and, and vice versa. And I've, I've never given him the flu shot. I don't I believe in my life I've ever taken the flu shot. And my doctors think I'm nuts. One doctor in particular, two doctors in particular, they lambast me. But then... When I was I'm walking out of the office, the nurse in one case and wife slash nurse in the other case say to me, I never take it either. I don't blame you. So I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And then I turn on CNN the other day, I think it was, and I'm listening to my hero, Dr. Peter Doshi. He may not want to be my hero, uh, scientist at Johns Hopkins University. And he is raising questions about the effectiveness of the flu shot. Now, I know it's uh, June, doctor, but welcome to the show, and let's talk about this. Great. Thanks for having me. Okay. So, so what is the problem? First of all, do you take a flu shot? I don't. Okay. Why? Uh, I'm not convinced that influenza is a major public health threat, uh, so I have problems with the overarching policy. But at a personal level, you know, I, I fit in the healthy adults category. And so influenza is particularly not a threat for me. And for most healthy adults, this is a disease which is unpleasant if you do get it, and most people don't get it. It's far more rare than we think, and this is, again, one of the big problems is we're led to think that everybody's getting this and everybody's going to ha- at risk for serious complications. Uh, the risk is, uh, I think, quite a bit lower than we're, we're led to believe. And the other side is even if you do want to reduce whatever small risk there may be, it's not clear at all that influenza uh, vaccines are going to prevent the serious outcomes that I think are really the reason the vaccine exists. If you want to take the vaccine to lower your risk of having influenza, there's some evidence that it does do that. But again, the disease is far more rare than we think. So what the best evidence is out there you need to vaccinate between 33 and 100 healthy adults for just one of those people to avoid having influenza. Okay, so so they so these people would not get it anyway, or the flu shot doesn't work. And uh, what do you try? So, you, so it, there's a whole bunch of messages yeah. here. The the first is that influenza is far more rare than we think. So one of the things I'm trying to raise more awareness of and get uh, public health officials to speak more clearly about is that we call this a flu shot. People call it a flu shot, right? You, you, everybody term, get your flu shot. Right. Well, if you think, if, if you take a flu shot, then you would think that that's going to reduce your chances of getting the flu. Well, it turns out, and we've known this for decades, this is not new information, but flu is something that's caused by many different viruses and even some bacteria of which influenza viruses are just one bit. So I'm not talking about different strains of influenza here. I'm saying that all the strains of influenza are just one little piece of the flu pie. And so when you look at the numbers that are compiled by the government on this, it looks like about one in six flus are actually influenza. So if you imagine this as the perfect vaccine that works 100% of the time, That means it's going to work against one in six flus. You would think it would work 100% of the time, but it's not. So that's why, not to interrupt, but that's why some people say, I got the flu shot and it gave me the flu. It didn't give them the flu necessarily, but it didn't prevent uh, them getting the flu from the alternate sources you're referring to. Is that, would that be accurate? Precisely, precisely, exactly. And people, that's the whole problem is people are led to hold these unrealistically high expectations of what this, Uh, vaccine can do, given all the marketing around it, when there's no reason to have those high expectations. All right, let's, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, we we just don't have, uh, you know, vaccines against everything that causes flu. One of the few ones that's readily available is influenza vaccine. And so that that what seems like a just slight semantic difference 
gets blurred over and they're just rolled out as flu shots. We got about two minutes left. We're talking to uh, Dr. Peter Doshi, scientist at Johns Hopkins University here on the Steve Malzberg Show. All right, so let me ask you this. Why then? I mean, is this, uh, is this because uh, everybody benefits financially, the, the, the p- companies that make it, the doctors, the, the, the promotion, the advertising, uh, the government? I mean, why, why are peop- not more people saying what you're saying? Why are we told basically the complete opposite and have been told that for years and years and years? Well, it's, there's money involved everywhere, but that I don't think is really how to understand or explain why a lot of people with good intentions, like your own doctor, are also unaware of most of the evidence here. I think to to understand that, you have to look at at how information is put together. Your doctor is not likely doing his own homework on this, right? They're relying on sources like CDC to tell us what the evidence says. And CDC, I think, have you ever heard the phrase, don't just stand there, do something? Yeah, sure. Well, I think no matter how bad the evidence might look for this vaccine, how poor the effectiveness might be, if there's something, they'll take, they take the position, I think, that something is always better than nothing. Right. Be proactive and, be uh, proactive and yeah. do something. And what that ignores, unfortunately... we got 30 that, seconds, Doctor, but continue. 30 seconds. Yeah, so it ignores that there are, at times, and I don't want to put any false scares out here because mostly this appears to be a safe vaccine, right? There, uh, the profile seems to be. That doesn't mean that harms don't occur. And so when we think that this is risk-free, I think we're wrong. In fact, in Australia and Sweden and Finland, they had some serious adverse events that nobody predicted occurred just in 2009. All right, Doc, Doc I, I, this is fascinating. I do want to have you back, and we'll pursue this maybe a little later on, closer to the time. Thank you.